Hey, welcome to Well.com, home of TIG time. Hi, I'm Mr. TIG, and we're still at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway where we're in the welding garage, and uh, we got a special request to try a product, and uh, every once in a while we'll grab a product that uh, we haven't used and may not have any experience with, and this particular product is called uh, Solar Flux Type B. And I'm told it works good in applications, um, mostly for stainless steel. And, and in almost all of my applications, I recommend putting argon purge gas for the backside purging, uh, primarily because of the chromium oxides. If, if you weld through this material, stainless steel, and this happens to be a 304 stainless, and we're going to weld it with a 308L filler material, and the weld will look good from the side that the torch is putting argon gas on, but the backside we'll turn it over and you're going to be able to see that it's got a lot of oxides on it. Now the corrosion resistance drops tremendously and you're going to get premature cracking and the life of the parts not going to be as long. There are certain applications where you just can't get argon gas to the back side but you can get this material here. It's a substance. It's kind of a, uh, I don't know, it's, it's got kind of a creamy substance when we mix it up. But it, what it says here is to take this, uh, mix it with alcohol, stir, stir it thoroughly and form a thin paste, and then paste it on the back side where you want to protect it from getting the oxides. So we're going to try it. I'm going to mix this thing up, and uh, it, I have to leave it for a few minutes. Uh, apparently it'll create some kind of a chemical reaction, and then I'll brush it on. So uh, let's, let's start, and uh, I'll go ahead and, and mix up just a little bit. Let it sit for uh, maybe four or five minutes, and then I'll brush it on the side that I want to protect. Okay, I've got my, uh, my stainless steel here. It's already pre-tacked, so I'm going to go to the back side of it. I'm going to brush this on, and the instructions just say to put a uh, nice, nice coat in the area that you're going to weld. So. That, that's what I've done. So I've got a nice coat on the back side. I got plenty of extra here, as you can see. So uh, I'm going to go ahead, put my gear on, and I'm going to put maybe two more tacks on there. Make the weld, and then uh, we'll we'll take a look at it. We'll turn over to the back side, and then I'm going to weld another sample that has absolutely no gas backup whatsoever. And then we'll do just a direct comparison. Okay, I'm, um, I'm welding it, oh, somewhere around 50 or 60 amps. Just, uh, I want to penetrate and I want to make sure that this back side is uh, getting covered by this material that we just brushed on. It seems to be welding normal. I don't see any contamination bubbling up through the puddle. Anyway, I'm just, just dabbing kind of a slow travel speed. Anyways, I'm getting close to the end of the weld, so um, I'll probably just dab a couple little extra dabs. Okay, I didn't, uh, I didn't see anything abnormal. Uh, I just, I welded kind of slow. I just want to see if anything was bubbling through. So, uh, you know, from, from a normal weld and stainless steel, it, it welded just fine. So uh, I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll turn it over, see what I can see visually. And it, it kind of looks like that there's a coating that formed on here. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and weld the second part, and it doesn't have any gas backup whatsoever. Then I'm going to clean them both off. I'll clean this off and see what's on the back side. Then I'll just set them side by side so you can compare them. 
Okay, I got arc initiation, and I'm, you know, I'm welding about a 16 gauge material. So I'm at about 60 amps, maybe even less. I'm holding a pretty tight arc at uh, just about probably 9 to 10 volts. Um, without gas backup, it's still running pretty decent, but it seems to be penetrating. And uh, of course, when it penetrates and it gets to the backside and there's oxygen there, you're going to be able to see the Rice Krispies, and we call those chromium oxides. Uh, not a good thing. So uh, it's welding fine. I'm dabbing, running just about the same travel speed. I'm only using a 1 16th diameter tungsten. Uh, and argon is about 15 to 20 CFH, just a pretty standard setting. Uh, I, I see actually the part is shrinking and moving a little bit more than normal. So uh, when we finish, we'll take a look at it and see uh, how much di it's distorted. So I get to the end of the weld, and I'm going to add some extra filler material, and I'm going to back off on the foot control, and we'll let the puddle re-solidify. I've got about six to seven seconds post-flow. I'm just going to hold it over the weld, six to seven seconds, and we're done with this weld. Okay, now that I did both wells, one with no gas purge on the backside whatsoever, here's the characteristics that I found. I started off this particular plate, actually had a pre-bend in it, and it penetrated so rapidly and created oxides on the back side, it actually distorted more. Anyway, I'm going to turn it over, and you can see that I've got some tremendous oxides right here. Now, it, it doesn't mean that this part won't hold, but you've got to take a look at your application. If you want this to last forever, you need to get rid of these oxides. So any critical applications that you have, this is just totally unacceptable. I'm going to leave it here for a minute. And yeah, this one was the sample that I did that had the Solar Flux B. And it welded with really good buildup. Uh, the flux itself actually kind of held the puddle well. And so I got a positive buildup, but the pre-bend that I've got in here is still there. And it, it didn't distort as much. So just kind of a phenomenon that occurred. And when I turned it over, I had all this flux on the back side. And, uh, Actually, I could see through the, the flux, and I could see that it was a shiny, clear, non-oxided penetration. So I wire brushed it just to s give us a little better view of it. Um, I'm sure there's uh, some other methods of getting this off here, but we just wire brushed it because we're here in the shop today and don't have all the uh, uh, provisions to get, get rid of it. So it, it's pretty tenacious. But when I look at it, and I look at the penetration, I could see that it, it wet it out. I don't have chromium oxides on the back side, so I've got to, uh, I, I've got to give this product uh, you know, a thumbs up. Uh, again, I haven't used it very much, so this was a uh, kind of a trial run. And I want to invite you uh, to give us a, a shot at, at testing your product. If you send us a product, uh, we're going to test it to the fullest. We're going to give you an unbiased opinion. Uh, just be prepared that we're going to tell it like it is. Uh, a guy taught me one time uh, never to compromise. In fact, uh, I want to do a shout out to you, Carl Peters, and, uh, and I never have. So any product that comes to us, we're going to test it. We're going to give it our opinion without any other influence. So thank you for watching Tig Time. I'm Mr. Tig.